What's up guys, I am Ian and today I wanna to know if you guys can tell the difference between these two photos because one of them was shot with the Tamron 70 to 180 and the other was shot with the Sony 85. So, can you tell the difference? We're gonna find out which one of you guys were right later on, but first let's go through just the basic specs. What are the differences between these two lenses besides the obvious size difference and the fact that this is Tamron and this is Sony. Let's get into this real quick. First up, the Tamron 70 to 180 and the max aperture, as you can see right here, is 2.8. The minimum aperture of this is F22, just like a lot of lenses. The length of this, when it is all the way down at 70, is six inches. The weight of this bad boy sits at 800. 110 grams for those of us using ounces that is 28.6 ounces that is a lot of weight but the minimum focus distance for this is actually quite good it sits at 10.63 inches and for those of you in centimeters that is only 27 centimeters that is intense next up the sony 85 and max aperture as you can see right here is 1.8 the minimum aperture for this just like the other is f22 and as you can see pretty clearly it is much shorter this little guy sits in at 3.23 inches that is near half the height and with that teeny tiny body you get a teeny tiny weight this one sits in at 371 grams that is just over 13 ounces that means that this even though it is just over half the height of the Tamron 70 to 180, it is less than half of the weight. That's really cool. But then here's where it kind of falls apart for the Sony 85. The minimum focus distance is 80 centimeters. That is 2.62 feet. That That is so, so far away from you. I don't know what happened here, but no. So now let's compare. So I'm gonna shrink myself and let's pay attention to these two clips. I'm not gonna tell you which is which. I'm gonna see if you can find out. Now I'm gonna be following along on my phone because you know I need a reference point. All settings are the exact same in the camera between the two lenses. The lighting is also the same. I even brought it into post, edited one, and then copied the exact same settings over to the other. So apart from the lens, these are the exact same in terms of my settings, my control. So let's see if you can tell these apart. So I'm gonna hit play. And these are both on a Shark Nano uh, slider so that I can replicate the shots perfectly, exactly. Now these are both hit at 2.8 and just sliding and sliding. Obviously there's a difference in the color, but are you able to tell any other difference? Now, honestly, at this angle, at this distance, even I was having a hard time really noticing a difference apart from the color. So let's see if we can go to another clip and let's see if you can tell the difference on this. The only difference between the last sequence and this is that on this clip, I put a plus two uh, diopter on the lens so that I could get much closer. Let's see if you can tell a difference in anything else besides the color. So let's hit play, watch this going. But the color is more obvious and I wanna know if you see anything else different between these two clips. I'm gonna let it go back. Do you notice anything else? It's okay if you don't. I literally had to watch this like five times before I picked it out. So let's scrub backwards and I'm gonna pause. Can you see anything different about the bottom left of both of the frames? The framing is a little different. The subjects and, and all the artifacts, the little cubes, which are magnets, by the way, are really fun to play with, and the little compass pouch, they are sitting differently in the frames. On one, it's a little closer than the other. Not saying anything else, that kind of should give you a hint as to which one of these is the 70 to 180 very long lens versus which one of these is an 85 short prime. Kind of just gave you the hint there. So a longer lens means the optics are closer to the subject. The top one on both this clip and the last set of clips was the 70 to 180 from Tamron. Yeah, those colors are naturally out of the Tamron lens. Colors aside, there's not much difference other than, you know, tiny little minutia of things that you can't even really tell 
unless you're really cropped in or really looking for it. And that's a testament to how well the Tamron lenses are built. So now let's shift me over and pop up two more clips. So as you can see, I am now outdoors. I tried to keep everything as controlled as possible, but you can't really control, you know, perfect sunlight and perfect uh, subject matter when you're talking about plants. The wind is gonna hit it, the sun is moving. So unfortunately, the, the slight color differences and uh, shaping of you know the subject and how often it's gonna move in these next couple clips. I can't control that, but I did the best that I could. That being said, let's take these clips for the autofocus. So really pay attention to you know that individual rows that is in focus and let's see if you can tell if there's any differences. So let's push play and all settings exactly the same, 2.8, 2.8, and uh, same ISO, same shutter speed, same everything, post is all the same. Are you able to tell, based off of the autofocus, which one is which? But if you couldn't tell from there, that's okay. Let's go to this next clip, F4, for both of these. So everything else is the exact same. Can you tell the difference based on the autofocus? Which of these lens did which of these clips? And you can see it in that autofocus. That top one does, does kind of jump around just a little bit as, as that bokeh flower stem is coming across frame. It does kind of jitter. But what about the bottom? Does it do it also? And honestly, if you could tell the difference and you could tell which one, awesome. The top for both of these clips was also the Tamron 70 to 180. I mean, the, the fact that we get that much heat out of the, the Tamron is amazing. It really brought out some natural sun heat and it was really great to see. I, I couldn't even tell in camera. Once I brought it into post, I was like, wow, this is, I thought this was the Sony. So very weird to see that the Sony was so cyan in those green hues. It, it really pulled a lot of the heat out. Let's now, See if you guys can guess which of these is which lens. It's so close. It really is, isn't it? It's, it's crazy close. So I'll admit something. This is actually a trick because both of these are the Sony. The difference is the bottom here is when it's at 1.8. So that's really interesting that at 1.8, it kind of brought some of that heat back. Like, I'm, I'm not really sure what's happening there, but it is happening. But also how good is that autofocus at 1.8? Like that's, that's freaking sweet. Okay, time. Let's bring up those two photos again. Now these are at 2.8. Now that you've seen some of the differences and some of the character pieces of these two lenses, can you tell the difference? If you still can't, it's okay. Let's flip it up and change them to when they're at F4. It's really interesting how much heat, remember that, the Tamron lenses give. So if you chose left side, guess what? You're correct. Those were the Tamrons. It's crazy how the same everything between these two lenses can produce such a, a segmented difference in a specific hue of how it's shown to the viewer at, as the end result. It's, it's phenomenal. Like once you get down to the just subtle nuances between tech and between optics, between different companies, it's great. Okay, now let's bring it all back. They're both great lenses, as you saw. There's really no bad lens between these two comparisons at 85. The autofocus at 1.8 was phenomenal. Are you kidding me? Uh, the sharpness of both of them, tack on. I actually had to decrease the detail a little bit in both of the lenses. Apart from, you know, the focal ring and maybe the actual weight or the distance, if you just need an 85, I would say the 85 from Sony is most certainly your go-to. If you're doing anything with manual focus, I would 
almost lean towards the Tamron, like automatically, almost, because you just have more range. You can be sure of hitting your mark. Photos, on the other hand, especially for most of us, we do use autofocus on a lot of it. That Sony 85, oh, just beautiful. I'm gonna leave it up to you guys because I can see a use case for both of these. I really can. But you tell me, are you gonna be using the Tamron 70 to 180 or would you rather use the Sony 85? They really do have specific use cases and I wanna see your specific use case, how you guys would use these in the comments. So I'll see you there.